Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So far, I have completed the explanation of accounting standards from 1 to 9. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain you a few problems on these accounting standards from 1 to 9. From 1 to 9, two accounting standards are withdrawn, that is 6 and 8. Accounting uh, standard number 6, depreciation. And accounting standard number 8, accounting for research and development. These two accounting standards are withdrawn. So out of 9, 2 are withdrawn, so 7 accounting standards are there. On these accounting standards, in examination, a problem may also be asked, not only theory. But the problems are based on the provisions of accounting standard. So before watching this video, I expect my viewers to be perfect on the provisions of different accounting standards which I have explained in the previous videos. If you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject accounting standards, watch the videos on accounting standard 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. up to accounting standard 9, that is revenue recognition. On those accounting standards, these problems are based. So before starting the problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So always keep ready the problems and take the screenshot of the solution of the first four problems on these accounting standards. Then I'll explain all the points in detail. First problem number one. This problem is on accounting standard 2, AS2, valuation of inventories. From the following data, find out the value of inventory as on 30th April 2009 using LIFO method and FIFO method. So four transactions are given. By applying this four transaction, we have to find out what is the value of the inventory at the end of the month, that is 30th April 2009. The transactions are given from on 1st April, 6th April, 9th April, 18th April by applying FIFO and LIFO method. See carefully. Uh, computation of value of inventory as on 30th April 2009. First, it is asking you to apply LIFO method. Last in, first out. The material which is lastly received should be issued first. That is LIFO method. Now, this is the statement which shows the movement of material stock when material is purchased it should be recorded in receipts when material is issued for production it will be recorded in issues column and after every receipt and issue the balance will be found in this balance column the so three broad columns are the receipts column issues column and balance under each of the column, three sub-columns we will make for quantity, rate, amount. Similarly, quantity, rate, amount, quantity, rate, amount. Three sub-columns in each main column. First column is date. Now, the transaction given is 1st April 2009. There's a purchase of 10 units at 70 rupees per unit. So here, whenever there is a purchase, receipt column. So 1st April 2009, 10 units are purchased at rupees 70 each. So multiply 10 into 70, you will get 700. This is the purchase. After every purchase, put the balance. So in the balance column, quantity 10 units, rate 70, same thing. Whatever we have received, the same thing we are writing in the balance. First transaction completed. Now next transaction is on 6th April. So here I have written 6th April. What is the transaction? 6th April 2009 sold 6 units at rupees 90 per unit. For calculating value of inventory, we don't require selling price. We need the cost price. At what cost we have purchased the material. So here on 6th April, 6 units are sold. When it is sold, it should be recorded in issue column. So issue column, 6 units are sold at a cost of rupees 70 don't take 90 rupees 90 rupees is the selling price but we record the cost price in this statement 
so cost is 70 rupees so 6 units we have sold the cost was 6, 70 rupees so 6 into 70 420 rupees is the amount of material sold cost of metal sold now find out the balance before this sale how much was the stock 10 units out of 10 units how many units are sold away for 6 units so 10 minus 6 you will get 4 units remaining so what was the cost of that 70 rupees so 4 into 70 280 rupees is the balance this is a stock of material now after 6th 9th april purchased 20 units at 75 per unit whenever there is a purchase record in the receipt column so 9th 20 units are purchased at 75 rupees so amount 20 into 75 1500 now whenever we follow fifo or lifo method keep the stock separate old stock new stock all the stocks should be kept separate so before this purchase how much was the balance 4 units 70 rupees 280 the same thing 470 280 this is the old stock and the new stock purchase is 275 1500 20 75 1500 so two lots we have one old lot one new lot the old lot of material 4 units which we have purchased for 70 rupees the amount 280 and the new lot we have purchased 20 units 75 rupees per unit it comes to 50 rupees. so these two lots are in the stock 18th on 18th april 2009 sold 14 units at rupees 100 per unit we don't require 100 that is the selling price the so 14 units are sold now remember we have to see which method we are following fifo method or lifo method lifo method last in first out so in these two stocks the last stock received is 16 uh, last stock uh, received is 20 units this four uh, units is the old stock first stock and the second stock is 20 units so whenever we are following lifo method we have to issue the material from the last lot second lot so second lot is 20 from 20 we are issuing 14 so 20 units we are issue, from 20 units we are issuing 14 units at rupees 75 so 14 into 75 1050 now what is the balance the old lot remains same the first lot remains same the first lot 470 to 80 470 to 80 as it is the second lot out of 20 units 14 units are issued so 20 minus 14 6 units are remaining from the second lot so 6 unit at 75 rupees 450 so these two lots are remaining after 18th no other transaction is given after 18th so we close the month the month is closed on 30th april so 30th april we will take the balance don't write anything in receipts anything in columns anything issues directly will come to balance in balance 470 to 80 to 470 to 80 675 450 675 450 take the total the 4 plus 6 10 units 280 plus 450 730 rupees that is the value of inventory at the end of the month april 10 units are there in the stock the cost of that unit is 730 that's it this is lifo method now we have to find out according to fifo method we have to apply fifo method and find out what is the value of inventory same format what format we have drawn for lifo the same format for fifo first transaction first april 10 units are purchased at 70 rupees each 700 same thing you take it in the balance column 10 70 70 sixth column we have issued we are issued how many units six units we are selling selling means going out issued so six units are issued at a selling price of 90 rupees but we should not take selling price we need the cost what is the cost of this 70 rupees so these six units are issued from 10 units 70 rupees 420 so 10 minus 6 4 units are remaining 70 rupees so 280 is the balance 4 into 70 280 is the balance on 9th on 6th now come to 9th 
On 9th date, 20 units are purchased at 75 rupees each. So 20 into 75, 50 units. Now we have two lots, first lot and second lot. The first lot was 4 units remaining 70 to 80. This is the first lot. Second lot purchased is 20, 75, 1500. Now two lots, first lot, second lot. Now 18th date, there is issue of 14 units. It is given in the problem. On 18th, there is sale of 14 units at 100 rupees. Don't take 100. That is the selling price given in the problem. We need the cost. Now these 14 units, we are following FIFO method. First in, first out. So first of all, we issue the first lot. The first lot is 4 units. 4 units, 70 rupees. This is the first lot. That we will issue first. So 4 units, 70 rupees, 20. Now totally we have to issue 14. 14 must have first already we have issued. The remaining 10 units we issue from the second lot. So from this 20 units, we are issuing 10 units. So 10, 75, 750. So 4 plus 10, 14 units we have issued. The 4 units we have issued from the first lot and 10 units we are issued from the second lot. Totally 14 units we have issued, right? Now the balance remaining will be from the second lot because the first lot is completely issued, exhausted. These 4 units already issued. From this 20 units, 10 units are issued. So remaining 10 units, 75 rupees, 750. Only one balance is there. Now we close the month, 30th April, last date of the month. Take the same balance, 10 units, 75 rupees, 750 rupees. That's it. So value of inventory as per LIFO method is 730. <coughs> and the value of inventory as per FIFO method is 750. So 730 closing stock value, LIFO method. 750 closing stock value as per FIFO method. That's it. These are the provisions regarding the AS2. Next, second problem. Bharat Petroleum closes its accounts at the end of each month. The following information is available for the month of April 1983. Sales 5 lakh rupees, administrative expenses 40,000, inventory on 1st April 1983 100 tons at rupees 1000 per ton. So 100 into 1000, 1 lakh. Inventory on 1st April, 1st April means beginning of the month because we are closing the month on 30th April. The beginning of the month opening inventory was 100 tons at 1000 per ton, so 1 lakh. Purchases are made on 10th April, 200 units at 900 per ton. So 200 tons were purchased at 900 per ton, 1 lakh 80,000. On April 20th, again there is a purchase of 200 tons at rupees 800 per ton. So 200 into 800, 1 lakh 60,000. Two purchases are made during the month, 10th April and 20th April. Inventory on 30th April is 1983 is 100 tons. The value is not given. We have to find out the value. Closing inventory on 30th April is 100 tons. Now we have to find out what is the value or cost of the 100 tons closing inventory. Compute the following data by FIFO method. Specifically given the business follows first in first out. That means the closing stock is remaining from the last purchase. Inventory valuation. We have to find out what is the inventory value on 30th April. Cost of goods sold for April and profit or loss for April. That's it. This is the problem. So three things it is asking you to calculate. What is the value on 30th April? What is the cost of goods sold during April? And what is the profit made during April? That's it. Now, Bharat Petroleum statement of cost and profit for the month of April 1983. So two columns, inner column, outer column. Sales. The total sales during the month of April, 5 lakh rupees given in the problem. Now less, cost of goods sold. Remember, cost of goods sold means we have to take the opening inventory, add purchase minus closing inventory. That will give you cost of goods sold. Opening inventory, 100 tons are given, each ton 1000 rupees. So 100 into 1000, 1 lakh is the opening inventory given. Now purchases are made two times, 10th April, 20th April. On 10th April, 200 tons are purchased at 900 rupees per ton. So 200 into 900, 1,80,000. 
on 20th april again 200 tons are purchased at one sick at 800 rupees per ton so 200 into 800 1 lakh 60 000. opening inventory value 1 lakh and purchases value 1 lakh 80 1 lakh 60 so take the total 4 lakh 40 000. from 4 lakh 40 000, deduct to the closing inventory it is given in the problem that 30th april inventory is 100 tons but we are not given the cost now we will find out the cost less closing inventory 100 tons one point is given in the problem the business follows FIFO method first in first out that means whatever closing inventory is remaining that is remaining from the last purchase the last purchase was made on 20th April last purchase so 20th April what was the purchase price 800 rupees per ton so these 100 tons remaining are from this lot because first in first out opening inventory gone issued sold first purchase inventory gone from second purchase inventory 100 tons are remaining so 100 tons into 800 rupees 80,000 is the value of inventory closing inventory subtract so 440 minus 80 360 3 lakh 60,000 to this 3 lakh 60,000 add administration over it administrative expenses 40,000 so 360 plus 40 4 lakh rupees is the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold so sales minus cost of goods sold you will get the profit sales 5 lakh cost of goods sold 4 lakh 5 lakh minus 4 lakh profit is 1 lakh that's all so three questions are asked here value of inventory on 30th april 1983 it will be from the last purchase that is purchase on april 20th at 800 per ton the so value of inventory 100 tons into 880,000. specifically it is asking you three questions what is the value of inventory at the end of the month a what 80,000. cost of goods sold 4 lakh rupees here we have calculated and profit for the month is 1 lakh that's all this is the second problem now see the third problem best limited deals in five products pqrs and t which are neither similar not interchangeable all the products are completely different at the time of closing its accounts for the year ending 30 31st march 2011 the historical cost and net realizable value of the items of closing stock are determined as follows the so items pqrst historical costs are given and net realizable value is given what will be the value of closing stock for the year ended 31st march 2011 as per as2 valuation of inventories we have to find out what is the closing inventory at the end of the month at the end of the month that is uh, uh, at the end of the year sorry at the end of the year 31st march 2011 at the end of the year 31st march 2011 what is the value of inventory according to as2 valuation of inventories now remember the point which i have explained in as2 according to as2 the inventory should be valued at lower of cost price or net realizable value whichever is lower should be taken for each item separately because the items are not similar the items are not interchangeable completely different items so for each item we compare which is the lower either cost or net realizable value so here as2 provides that inventories should be valued at lower of cost price and or net realizable value inventories should be written down to net realizable value on item by item basis each item separately this are uh, the item wise valuation of inventory are shown below the so valuation of inventory item wise for the year ended 31st march 2011 first item name then historical cost given in the problem whatever is given in the problem same thing i have copied here then net realizable value exactly same whatever is given in the problem now value of closing stock now we apply the principle lower of cost price or market price here cost historical cost is 5 lakh 70 realizable value 475 whichever is lower so 475 is lower 
980 or 1032, whichever is lower, 980 is lower. 316, 289, whichever is lower, 289. 425, 425, it is same. So exactly 425, 160, 215, whichever is lower, 160. That's all. Now find out the total of the value of stock. The value of closing stock total 23,29,000. So while preparing the financial statements at the end of the year, we take the closing stock, closing stock of inventory as 23,29,000. So value of inventory on 31st March is 23,29,000. That's it. So this is the end of problem number three. Now problem number four. Raw material inventory of a company includes certain material purchased at rupees 100 per kilogram and the price of the material is on decline and replacement cost of inventory at the year end is 75 rupees per kilogram. The company has purchased the material for rupees 100 per kilogram and this material is used in making the finished product. What will happen at the end of the year? The realizable value of the material has declined. In the market, the value of material is 75 rupees per kilogram. Whereas the business has purchased at 100 rupees. This rule will not apply. That whichever is lower, the cost price or net realizable value, whichever is lower, this principle is applied only for the finished goods, not for the raw material. Raw material, some more consideration is given by AS2. Now it is, is it possible to convert? It is possible to convert the material into finished product at conversion cost of 125. That means, conversion cost means the labor and other expenses incurred to convert the raw material into finished product. So conversion cost in, involved is 125 to convert the raw material into finished goods. Decide whether to make the product or not to make the product. If selling price is 175 and rupees 225, two separate questions are there. If the selling price of the finished product is 175 or if the selling price of the finished product is 225. In both situations, we have to decide whether we should make the product or should not make the product. Also find out the value of inventory in each case. That's it. <clears throat> now remember the rule given by AS2. The rule is as per AS2. The valuation of inventory, material and other supplies held for use in the production of inventory are not written down below the cost. First to remember. Whatever is the cost, the same cost should be taken. We should not take the lower of cost or net realizable value. Because it's a material, it's not the finished product. Huh, previous problem, whatever we have applied, that is for the finished product. But here it is the material which is used in making the finished product. So here it should uh, other supplies held for use in production or inventory are not written down below cost. If the finished product in which they will be incorporated are expected to be sold at or above cost. If the finished goods can be sold at or above cost. At or above cost. The material cost is 100 rupees and the conversion cost is 125. The total cost will become 225. The total cost will be 225. Now we compare. If the product cost is less than 225, don't make the product. If the selling price is below 225, don't make the product. If the selling price is above 225 or 225, make the product. Now, <clears throat> here, however, when there has been a decline in the price of material and it is estimated that the cost of finished product will exceed NRV, the material are written down to NRV. The material should be written down to NRV. Then, uh, written down to, in such circumstances, the replacement cost of material may be the best available measure of the NRV. NRV is not given in the problem. So whatever is the replacement cost is given, that replacement cost is nothing but NRV. We treat it as NRV. Now, based on the above provision, the value of inventory and the decision to whether to make the product or not will be as under. Now, the provision already is given. Now, we apply this provision in order to decide whether we should make the product or should not make the product 
and what is the value of inventory this is the main question so first when selling price is 175 two selling prices are given if the selling price of finished goods is 175 so should we make or not and what is the value of inventory right now you compare incremental profit the selling price is 175 whereas the conversion cost is 125 the conversion cost 125 so how much excess money we are getting 175 minus 125 50 rupees is the incremental profit whereas what is the replacement cost net realizable value current price of material 75 it is given in the problem. So what is happening? The incremental profit is 75. Whereas the current price of material is 75. Therefore it is better not to make the product. Not to make the product. Because the current price is higher. Replacement price is more than the incremental profit. Incremental profit is only 50. Whereas our replacement cost is 75. Don't make the product. We should not make the product. Raw material inventory will be valued at NRV that is 75 rupees. We are not making the raw material. We are not making the product and the value of the raw material should be the NRV or replacement cost 75 rupees. Because the selling price of finished product is less than 225. Selling price of the product is 175. Whereas the total cost of the product comes to 225 because 100 rupees is the material cost and 125 rupees is the conversion cost so total 225 rupees is the cost whereas market selling price is only 175 don't make the product and the value of inventory is 75 in this case now second when the selling price is 225 suppose if the market selling price is 225 here we suggest to make the product Incremental profit is 225 minus 125. 225 is the selling price. Is the selling price. Conversion cost is 125. So 225 minus 125, 100 rupees we are getting the incremental profit. Whereas replacement cost of material is 75. 75 replacement cost, 100 rupees incremental profit. So we are getting more profit by making. So we suggest the company to make the product. To make the product the raw here the decision is therefore it is better to make the product the raw material inventory would be valued at rupees 100 per kg now the value of inventory should be taken at the cost the cost is 100 rupees right that is the rule so we have completed four problems on as2 that is valuation of inventories Inshallah, in the next video, I'll continue the problems on other accounting standards. So keep watching. Don't skip in between. Watch till the end. Not Don't watch once, twice, thrice. If you watch with full interest, you'll get a good command. And these videos are not only beneficial only for graduation. Even these videos are very much useful for post-graduation and professional courses. So all the best for your preparation. Inshallah, we will continue the next, uh, I mean, problem in the next video.